Normally at this time of year, Manchester United fans from all around the world are making their way to Trudering for the annual Munich memorial service at the site of the crash in 1958. But these, of course, are unusual times. Joining me now is the chairman of the Manchester Munich Memorial Foundation, Patrick Burns, one of the organisers of the activities that normally take place in Trudering. Thanks for giving us your time, Pat. Thanks for joining us. We all know travel is severely restricted right now, so it's no surprise we won't be in Trudering on Saturday, the 63rd anniversary of the Munich air disaster. I'd like to start, Pat, by asking you, how does it feel not to be in Trudering this time? Hi, John. Thanks for inviting me on again. Uh, it, it feels a bit surreal, really, and, and quite sad. Uh, as ever, in preparation, did a lot of work um, with our friends down in Munich, put together uh, a great agenda for the usual pilgrimage of, of fans going to Trudering. Uh, and, and there were to be, again, there was to be a, a, a dual uh, ceremony like there was last year. There was going to be the official unveiling of the memorial showcase with Bayern Munich, which I was going to be speaking at, uh, followed by our memorial service. Uh, and sadly, none of that can happen. We were honoured to be asked to support the petition for this showcase, and we were honoured to be involved in making sure that this came to fruition. I look forward personally to seeing our flag of friendship between our two great clubs and our two great cities on permanent display here, so that everybody who comes here can witness the friendship and the warm collaboration that exists between us and will do forevermore. Uh, and it's, it feels, it, it does feel sad that, that there's gonna be only a handful of people there uh, and it's regrettable, but it's absolutely the right thing to do. It's responsible and it's also respectful, I feel as well. Pat, it obviously means a lot to so many fans February the 6th is a big date in the calendar for Manchester United. And the travel restrictions mean many fans have turned to staging much smaller local events. I'm wondering, Pat, are you going to be playing any part in any of those events? I've done a few, I've done a few videos. I've done a few videos for, for Austria, uh, for Finland. Uh, Joe Glanville and Joe Tedesco are live on Malta TV on Friday. Uh, and they've arranged for me to go on with them. Fantastic. Uh, but I will, I will be on, on Saturday from three o'clock onwards, I will be tuned in to Munich 58. Uh, for me, that's the official uh, respectful ceremony in the UK out of Old Trafford. So that will have my attention. What, what I have managed to arrange, uh, because I do know that Bayern Munich will be at Manchester Platz, laying a wreath. I know the Red Docks Munich will be laying a wreath. Uh, and I've arranged for the, the CEOs of the two charities who we support in Munich, they will be laying the fans wreath on behalf of all United fans for the MMMF. And I, I will get a short video sent to me and, and we will make that available to everybody. It's, it's incredibly sad. I've been following the story of COVID in both Germany and the UK very, very closely. Uh, and it was only a few short weeks ago when we announced the third lockdown that made the official call to cancel the official ceremony. Uh, and that was done, you know, speaking to our friends down in Munich. I mean, the last thing they wanted was three or 400 United fans from the UK turning up in the middle of a pandemic. They are struggling, as we are struggling. So it, it's the right thing to do in the circumstances. Uh, and that's proved to be a correct decision because here we are just a few weeks later uh, and you can't fly out of this country unless you've got an exceptional reason to go. You can't arrive in Germany and be allowed into the country without an exceptional reason. You can't stay at hotels. There's nowhere open. Um, 
social distancing, masking, uh, negative testing, all, all those things are exactly the same in Munich as they are here for us. Uh, and it would have been completely impractical, irresponsible and disrespectful as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, Pat. Let's hope we can all get back to normal by this time next year. As you know, I'm making a documentary which very much revolves around Munich and the legacy we want to preserve by keeping alive the memories for future generations. And one of the main characters I'm focusing on is Jimmy Murphy. And I know you're very much a leader of the Jimmy Murphy campaign. So I'm wondering how important do you think it is that we all support the Jimmy Murphy campaign? The whole concept of putting a coalition together was my idea and, uh, and was agreed by the board of the MMMF uh, and brought five sister organisations on board as well, firmly believing that a coalition would stand a far stronger chance than a single organisation. So, you know, as far as, far as I'm concerned, we're, we're part of that part of the United family that is, is doing its utmost to have meaningful discussions with Manchester United Football Club about paying recognition for this great man. And, and, I'm, asked, and I'm asked about it all the time, and it, it's one of the big drivers for our foundation. It's, it's making sure that the legacy of, of those boys is carried forward into future generations. So, you know, we, we've been a not-for-profit company. We're now a registered charity. But we're, we, the people in the MMMF, there's 13 of us, we're, we're just the custodians of that. The MMMF itself belongs to Manchester United football fans. And it will be handed over to newer, younger, fresher generations of people in years to come. Because it will be part of the legacy of Manchester United. And, and it's our job to, to make sure that as we, as, as we come to the end of the generation that's got the direct link to the incident, and what we are left with then is families, generations of relatives and fans, it has to, it has to morph into something that befits that as well. So, so what we're really trying to do is to, is to shape it keep it respectful, keep it meaningful, and make sure that those that follow us don't ever forget either. And that's what we've done. We've created um, a charity which hopefully can stay at the hearts of Manchester United fans for, for decades and generations to come so that the babes are never forgotten. One of the main characters in my documentary, of course, is Harry Gregg. It was so, so sad to lose Harry 10 days after last year's Munich anniversary. I'm guessing there would have been an extra special tribute to Harry at Trudering. There would. I was, I was asked. I was asked that in an interview I did recently, and um, you see, it's not just. It's not just about the eight boys. It's not just about the babes. It's about the three club officials. It's about the eight journalists. It's about the two crew. It's about Bella Miklos, travel agent. Twenty-three people lost their lives. 23 families were bitterly affected and have carried this for 63 years and survivors too. And we, last year we've lost seven of our former players and we lost Tommy Doherty. So as a pilgrimage, not only would we have been remembering the 23 souls, but we would have also been, been paying our respects to, to those who we lost in the last 12 months. And, and particularly, you know, Harry Gregg, you know how dear and how important he was to us. You know, Jane is a patron. Jane Gregg's a patron of the foundation. Jimmy Murphy's son, Nick, is a patron of our charity. And they've both got children who are on the MNMF working committee. We really, do, we really do see it as, as, a, as a family, uh, a united family charity. And we don't own it. We, we've, we've given birth to it. We've grown it. We've got it to where it is. But it's not ours. We're just custodians for the fans and ready to hand this on to the people who've got the pride and the passion and the energy and the love 
I want to take this forward in the future. As you know, Pat, Harry's funeral was on the anniversary of the day Duncan Edwards became the eighth Busby babe to lose his life in Munich. And as you so poignantly said, every year we remember all 23 victims of the crash. But losing Duncan 15 days after the crash really was the final blow. If you ever hear Paul Murphy speak about the impact he had on his granddad, it was like a second state to that man's heart. I, I, I know his heart was broken in Munich when he was with Harry, when he first went over. And then to come back and start to rebuild from the ashes and then lose Duncan, that, that must have been... It, it would break many, many people. And that, that's the calibre of these, these great men. You know, you think of Samat and you think of Jimmy Murphy and, and Harry Gregg and Bill Fawkes and Bobby Charlton. For me, they're, they're the pillars of, of that generation, of that decade. They're the ones who got us back from Munich to, to rise to being European Cup champions in May 1968. We, we should never forget these men. You see, Jimmy Murphy, there's, there's nothing for Jimmy at Old Trafford. And that's what pioneered the, the, the desire to have some recognition there. Now, I, I don't like to think of the, the, you know, the, the confines of the stadium and the roads leading up to it. Nobody wants to see pillars and statues everywhere, like something out of 4th century BC in Pompeii or Rome. You know, that's not what we're about. But if anybody deserves recognition for what he did for our club, it's Jimmy Murphy. So the, the, the really encouraging news from Ed Woodward and from Manchester United in, in discussions with them is that they don't disagree. And, and they are setting up what they call a legacy and heritage committee. And one of, and, and one of the first things they're going to do is consider the proposal we've put in for Jimmy Murphy. But it's, it, it's, they're going to have to work out what, what a formula looks like, what, what a matri matrix of value to the club, longevity of the club, the state the club was in, the state you left it in, honours that you won, contributions that you made over what period. How does that translate to a form of recognition? And I, I've, got, I've got a very simple view you will not find anybody in, in the annals of the history of Manchester United who did more for our football club than Jimmy Murphy. Now, if what that great man doesn't translate to the highest form of recognition, I would be bewildered. And there are people who are not too far behind him. And I, and I think now of Harry Gregg, and I think of Bill Fawkes, and I know Bobby Charlton's got his recognition there, and I know Samat has, and I know Dennis and George have, has as well. Um, but I think before we start talking about the modern day greats, you know, Eric, Giggsy, Rooney, Cristiano, before they even start thinking about those people, they have to address the issues around Jimmy Murphy and Harry Gregg. I think we're similar age, Pat, and I think a lot of the things that you say really embody what I believe about our football club. I mean, I've always felt that the past inspires the future, and we never need to lose sight of these great men that you talk about. And I think it's absolutely fantastic what you and your committee at the Manchester Munich Memorial Foundation are doing. And we really owe a lot as Manchester United fans to what you do. Well, we, we, don't, we don't do it for money. We don't do it for love or adoration or, or praise, sorry. We do it because we love Manchester United. We always have done and we always will do. And we also know we're not going to be around forever. And it was a real, it, it, it was too good. After, after we put together the 60th anniversary and delivered that, it was too good an opportunity to miss, to create something which tangibly could form part of the history of Manchester United for fans. But what, what we do, we're, we're, just, we're, we're no different to anybody else. We're just football fans. We just love our football club. But we act on behalf of all fans. 
and, and we, you know, when when the time comes, you know, th there's nobody in the MMMF who will put their arms around it and say, no, this is mine. You're not having it. It will be it will be handed on willingly and lovingly when the time comes for you know for, for the next generation people who might be in their teens or twenties now or thirties or even forties. Now we've we've got quite a nice demographic split. There's, uh, I was thinking about this the other day when when we first set off there were 10, 10 members of, of of us and we weren't even a company then. Four have fallen by the wayside. There's six originals. And we are 13 now in total. But but there are four people who are, you know, the, the, they've not hit the mid-40s yet. Um, and we have got those those connections to Harry and to Jimmy. So the foundations are there. But what would be nice would be to uh to get now now that we are a registered charity and and you know, people said Pat, it'll take you 10 years to do that. We did it in less than three years. Now that is remarkable. So it's all there. It's it's all virtually gift wrapped, ready to, you know, for anybody who wants to come in and and, and, and be part of it. You know, no one would be turned away. You know, op open arms. It it really is owned by the fans, not by us. That's absolutely fantastic, Pat. It's very inspiring, and I hope in my own small way. I can make my own contribution by making the film, which is very much of a similar ethos. It's all about trying to shine a light on what you guys are doing and also what the association of former players are doing. We're, we're a cog in, in, that, in that wheel of that, of that family. As, as much as the Duncan Edwards Foundation is, the former players association, Must, the Red Army, you know, Keith with, with the big lily guys and, and, and the flag over in Northern Ireland. We're, we're all of similar mindset, which is why those particular organisations were, if you will, selected to form the coalition. Uh, but the other, the other part of that was to, to put a consortium together which Manchester United knew, recognised and respected and would listen to uh, and, and that has proved to be correct. And you know, as we as we speak, where are we? Early February, uh, expecting to hear in the next week what the uh, what the timeline is from United for the creation of this committee. Um, and I stand ready, along with Paul Murphy, representing the Murphy family, to personally make the appeal directly to the committee, uh, if they so wish. In, in these times, that might not be necessary. They've, they've got a written presentation, John, which you've seen, which, which all the chairman of the other organisations have seen, which are put together, you know, put together with their blessing and agreement. Um, and, and so we remain hopeful. Nobody has said no. Now, That's fantastic. Uh, I, won't, I, won't, I won't go into what happens if they do say no, but what I would say to any Manchester United fan who watches this is, is that there is a plan B and it will not, it will not dissuade us or divert us from our, our stated aim of Murphy family approval of recognition for Jimmy Murphy in the vicinity of Manchester United Football Club. That will happen. I would love it to happen with the blessings and contributions of Manchester United, but it will happen. But it's so brilliant to hear your determination and passion. And I'm sure that sooner or later, hopefully sooner rather than later, something will happen. It's a shame as a filmmaker and a publicist, I know it would have been the perfect time for the football club to make an announcement this week about a Jimmy Murphy tribute. It's not too late, of course. Let's see, let's see what happens. Meantime, what I would like to say, Pat, before we wrap up, is we do make these films to try to help spread the message, to try to get younger fans on board, to try to get all fans on board, of course. But as you know, a lot of our generation already know about the history and all about Munich. So as I know you keep on saying, it's all about preserving the legacy and passing it on to the next generation, and that's 
what we're trying to do. And I'm hoping that by making these little films, I can help to support what you do at the MMMF. Meantime, I'd like to thank you and your guys for doing what you do. And I just think we should repeat what we uh, mentioned earlier. Normally on the 6th of February, Munich 58, an organisation that works hand in hand with you at the Manchester Munich Memorial Foundation, hold a service at Old Trafford. And for fans who aren't staging their own memorial tribute this time, we urge you to follow the Munich 58 service on the internet, which I believe will be streamed by MUTV. That, that's right, yeah. I mean, Ma Mike Thomas and Elaine Giles who run Munich 58. Ma Mike Thomas is uh, a trustee of the MMMF. He's, he's our communications officer. And Elaine is on the committee, so there's those direct links between the two organisations. Um, and this, this promises to be uh, you know, different, but people have had to live their lives over Zoom and meets and or with Skype and all this face FaceTime over the last 12 months. So, you know, we, 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 we will, I'm sure we'll, be, we'll get used to it. I, I know it's a, it's a very interesting programme. There'll be the usual poems and, and songs and, 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 and words from, from, from the, the local reverend who attends, Reverend John. We, we, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the anniversary is not passing unrecognised. It, it, it's passing with people paying their respects in, in, in the best way they possibly can in the circumstances. And that's, it. that's important as well. So we, we've done, uh, I, I've done a piece, done some interviews, um, did an interview with UEFA, that's going to be published. UEFA have recognised us uh, as a charity uh, and they're going to publish a, a, a big piece on, on Saturday. Um, we've got things going on with, with, uh, with Malta and with Finland. Uh, and we've got our own very short wreath laying ceremony in Manchester Platz, which we will make publicly available to, to everybody through through our own media. So, so they're not forgotten. They'll never be forgotten because they're in our hearts. They're part of our family. And if you've ever been in Manchester Platz and heard me speak, um, you know, you'll, you'll know that this is what I say. It's our family. You, you, you pay your respects and this time we have to, we have to tailor and shape those respects accordingly, given where we are with this, this awful pandemic. That's beautifully said, Pat. And as you said earlier, it's very much a team effort. I'd like to thank you for being one of the leaders of that team. So please keep up the good work. My pleasure, John. God, God bless everybody. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all very, very soon when we get out of this.